of OTT and GSM operators. And, by the way, both sides are well aware of this, that in a while the GSM is going to come out of the market to um, give up. But this integration of the operators with e OTT, this allows the operators, this give, gives, them, gives them time out, gives them time to search for new ways out of the situation. And uh, the um, uh, most, so the only point for business growth for GSM operator is internet. Otherwise, GSM operators are not able to make money and have uh, revenues because, as it was said by our European colleagues, the users do not wish to talk by phones, having thousands of other possibilities. Now, in respect of the operators, uh, collaboration of operators and social networks, this collaboration bears dual character, or by the say, dual advantage, both for the operator and the social network. The social network receives a possibility to provide its services uh, to the global base of the operators. That is to say, when between social networks there is a competition, being partner with the operator, the social network has a possibility to have an advantage for the base of this operator. That is to say, if I'm not using WhatsApp, and if I know that WhatsApp somehow is there present, uh, at the operator's uh, tariff plan. I will use WhatsApp. That is the uh, benefit of WhatsApp. WhatsApp will never enter Armenia because Armenia is a very, very small market for it. That's why small countries like Armenia are using the global collaborations. Examples of such global collaborations are in Russia as well. These are the different MTS collaborations with different social networks, all big operators have this kind of uh, agreements. What is the advantage of the operator? What does the operator gain? Evidently, the operator loses revenues because, and that's clear, because you know, any company, any person working in the sphere of telecommunication, you know what does mean ARPU. This is the money that is received from one subscriber. It is going down because that call, if we look at the classic model, that money that is uh, that the operator could earn through the telephone network is not does not reach to the operator because the user uses OTT service. But the question is, uh, the user through GSM network has so many other opportunities and possibilities that this traffic, this world that way, doesn't go through GSM. The operator not simply loses GSM traffic. It simply allows uh, the subscriber to stay as his own subscriber, attracting him somehow so as not to lose lose this particular subscriber. Another interesting information, several big social networks, Google, Facebook, have announced that uh, by 2020, they are going to provide the whole globe, Earth, with internet. That is to say, in this case, the um, telecommunication operators are going to face a no, very, very uh, difficult uh, system, choice. I, I want to clarify uh, here, I want to make a correction. That is to say, they, they are not going to uh, launch some um, uh, meant uh, aircrafts and uh, uh, satellites that will cover the whole, that is to say, yeah, that they will cover the globe with new uh, meant aircrafts that will provide. Okay, Anush, if we are going to megabytes, then the revenue that is received from megabytes most is five or ten times less than from minutes. Megabyte is uh, that tarification which is not competitive in the market. And counting the megabyte revenue as a lost revenue in this current business model that exists in the global market in Armenia is not, uh, how to say, convenient, expedient anymore because megabyte tarification is moving out of the 
its paper megabyte, that model is squeezed out of the global market. It is to be forgotten. Uh, and well, how do you see? Is it possible, we say, a regulator, to compare this with the banking sphere, where there is also a regulator, legislative regulator, unlike the telecommunication regulator, about which they say that it is anti-constitutional. Sometimes they even say so. The bank regulator is assigning refinancing percentage rate, interest rate. I think it is 7.5 interest rate in Armenia. They, they assign, they fix that lower threshold, the bottom threshold, lower which the bank should not give any loans for interest rates. Can our regulator, say, fix a threshold, a lower threshold, lower which the operator cannot go uh, in selling their network. Well, this is also um, a matter of uh, concern of antitrust uh, commissions, and uh, this is to be regulated, regulated by the uh, anti-damping laws, antitrust laws. If this will, it will be proved that the operator, service provider is providing, is damping the prices lower than the cost, then the regulator can enter. Uh, and what's going to be the, uh, how do you think, what's the logic? The central bank is fixing this lower interest rate. Well, central bank is doing it because uh, they think that the financial system is to be stable and the banks are to provide as much capital that will allow them to keep the financial situation of the country stable. Well, our regulator also thinks that the uh, telecommunication sphere is to develop. We have to pass to 4G, uh, 5G. Well, you know, as the essence of telecommunication services is changing, the telecommunication network definition is also to be changed. I think sometimes later, this necessity for developing uh, in the same technological style as it is going on will change. And uh, the development of the network is also to be redefined, saying, what do we mean when we say development of the network? Well, in connection with the limitations, actually, in our country there is partial limitation. Like, for example, Armenia from outside interconnection starts from 18 cents, which has brought to the situation that if we look at this long term, 10, 20 years, there has been huge losses of budgetary means by technological market. And in that matter, we are on the same level as Azerbaijan, Belarus, and other countries. Uh, in US, it is this amount is zero. We have lost hundreds of thousands, million dollars because of this limitation. Before passing the floor to Thomas Mazoyan, I am asking uh, the our uh, uh, note taker that what Anush said that the legislation needs change needs uh, modification because our law about telecommunication was written in 2004 with your permission I will clarify I meant that the existing legislation is already regulating that situation and changing it I do not think is mm, expedient I misunderstood you in 2005 our law on telecommunication started it entered into force, which was, however, written in the pre-internet era, where the main highlight was on the interconnection. Uh, in these conditions, as Vahram said, this 10 cents which has, that has been uh, set is exactly this interconnection tariff uh, uh, limitation right that the uh, public services are using. However, at the same time, the same public services have forced the operators to make peering free of charge. That is to say, from one side we give megabytes free of charge, and from the other side the sell minutes with the tariff decided for interconnection. 
respect. Well, I do not think that we can we can compare the interconnect model with the collaboration idea of um, OTT and uh, networks. I res I suggest we need to research this issue and we need to think and understand this issue because it is not ambi unambiguous. Peering and the collaboration between OTT operators and social networks are not the same at all, by all means. So bringing the parallel between them, I think, needs some expert opinion. It needs research and additional study. Well, my idea is that in, when in 2005 the law started, entered into force, that law was regulating all relations which were not connected with Internet. For Internet, some sentences were included in there. First, that uh, we do not know what is Internet. Second, that we are not regulating the IP numbers because we are not providing them and nothing else is written there in the law about Internet, actually. So, now, as we see the growth of the smartphones, I showed in my presentation the growth of the 3G networks. Of course, these are all simply figures. It is very necessary to have that side of the telecommunication a regulation to bring it over internet. I don't mean content, not at all, not at all. Simply the relations uh, in financial field in that direction so as to be able to continue the development of networks from the revenues received from this telecommunication, which also is to be defined in the law. That is my personal opinion. Maybe there are other opinions as well like leave the old law without any changes. Thomas, you as uh, 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 the representative of Omnip on operator having the biggest subscriber base, what can you say? So as by figures we would understand what's going on in Armenia. We know what is going on uh, outside Armenia by figures. Moreover, your company is a public company and I assume that this data is written somewhere. I want to say that being big means that also that our revenues are that we lose are also big. The smaller you are, the impact on your loss is less. The smaller you are, you lose less. Well, if you want me to be open, frank, I should confess that we have already felt in the course of the recent years the uh, loss that uh, the OTT causes us. That's a difficult issue. That's tough, hard issue. What you said exactly, there is, and uh, that's my opinion, there is no correct approach. Each company, each operator has its own approach, and we have to find our own approaches, each of us, because there is no even attested model. Indeed, that is a dilemma, because from the other side, you are absolutely right that this is also an innovation, after all. And from the operator's side, the operator should always provide the maximization of their revenue so as to keep the network on the right level, on the level it wants. And it means that every two years, once we have to make very major your investments. What's interesting that at the same time we are selling smartphones and all the operators, our partner operators, are we are selling data at the same time. That is to say, to some extent, we are kind of promoting the use of OTT by people. But from the other side, we say OTT are causing losses and OTT is bad and whatever. And that is the dilemma. So what to do? In my opinion, all mobile operators in the world uh, have to pass through this process of transformation somehow. And the transformation could have different forms. Well, in OTT, concretely, could be very possibly some kind of model of partnership. Or maybe OTT and mobile operator will understand finally that they are adding each other. They are, uh, they are not, not substituting each other but they are kind of adding each other because OTT can't work without operator and vice versa. But seems to me it's early to speak about this because OTT are uh, very uh, confident. They don't feel that pressure. But to some point when mobile operators will stop making these investments and they will understand that there is going to be a big problem there. 
Okay, if the mobile operators will not develop their networks, means that OTT will not be able to develop, that's what you want to say? Oh, in some small region or in some location, yes. I think that this needs more time, but the today's uh, level of development of 3G networks allows to use OTT services, at least the vocal ones. This uh, transfer has already taken place, oh, only if the smart number of smartphones will grow and only if the number of subscribers will go, which means that we have to grow our capacities. And for growing capacities, it means that we are to make bigger investments. What if we don't do these investments? It means that it will impact negatively on the quality of the OTT. I again say, in short term, no, but in longer term, like four or five years, it will become more visible. That is, we have to find somehow a way for working together. And that form of collaboration is still in the process of discussion. There is no, that is to say you are for the third model. Let's do nothing. Let's see what happens. Most probably, yes. Right now, I would say yes. But sooner or later, we have to find the way out. Because, as I said, we do not see how are we going to work. How are we going to find this point uh, for win-win situation that both parties will see the benefit, that it be bilaterally beneficial. From mobile, the mobile operators, they have more negative approach towards OTTs, and the OTTs say, well, I'm not dependent on operators. So I want to say that our relations have only started to develop, and we have only started to understand each other. I think that these relations are going to become wider and closer in the course of the coming years, and we are to find that point that will bring to win-win situation. That is so. We do not exclude that mobile operators will be paid by OTT services for renting the networks. This is a possibility. Yes, this is a possibility, but there might be other options as well. These options are yet to be developed. I suspected that uh, Beeline is uh, collaborating with WhatsApp exactly that way, because $3 is really very little for one month. We could assume that WhatsApp is the bigger Beeline, the Amsterdam Beeline, that WhatsApp is giving money to Beeline. Uh, he says only promote WhatsApp in Armenia, and for each subscriber, or I don't know, through other mechanisms, going to pay you because this world that I'm making the money well I am going to not answer to that question that would be more correct if I don't answer to that question well with my all operators these are uh, how to say dual relations mutual relations and not always monetized these relations are based on business interests each side of course has its own business interest and then not necessarily always these interests are monetized. I think Liana said that we have here a representative from Armentel. Can we ask you your opinion? Because recently we were discussing this same issue. You are not included in the number of panelists because there has been no formal answer. Frankly, I would not like to ask, discuss that issue. But in general terms, how would you evaluate the impact of OTT? Is it positive, negative, neutral? Well, from the viewpoint of operator, it is negative. From the point of view of innovation, of course, it is positive as long as we all are looking towards more digitization. That's why we are not creating obstacles uh, for the development of OTT. Of course, some solutions are to be found so as it would be convenient as for the operator, as for the OTT, because as my colleague said from Vivacel, we need money for developing our networks because the penetration grows. And now it is 35% of penetration of smartphones. 35, you say. In United States, it's 64. So here it is only 35. Well, but it is growing. 
by all means, because everybody sells <laughs> smartphones, and that's <laughs> the main. But 35 is a small figure. Indeed, it is small. Means we have a whole way to grow. Exactly. Maybe we have not yet felt the impact that painfully. But nevertheless, we understand. Thank you very much for the figure. Thank you very much for the information. Thomas, can you give any data? In 2013, you said, oh, in respect of 2013, you said that you have made 25 million investments, but for 10 millions, your revenues have gone down. At least in percentage, could you say how much, how are your revenues going down, if it's not a secret? Well, uh, we always give uh, this information to the um, uh, revenue regulating committee. It's not a secret, uh, but I will tell you that we started to lose money by uh, at the end of 2013. Approximately, I would say, 10 billion drums per year is our loss. The trend is still persisting, and it is growing. And you mean it is accelerating, uh, like it is... Uh, uh, the uh, yeah the dec uh, the loss is acquiring acceleration. Uh, That's Yura, what you want Yura, to say. Please. Okay, Yura, the floor is yours. Kartsumem, as iravichakum yer operator po records num sa standard iravichakie merorerum tiroch bolor operator mali hamar yevinchu vorov hetev sa e. I think I spell something. Sa jana pare vore vor chiberi vore ve bani chihangets ne. I think and sa yel kchunet soch jana pare. Operator ne re chpet ke a a a yel vite pet ke pochven urish technologia ne ri men kima asumen ka iterashali bar LTE mes knar kum ne ri jamanak ishumen dramasin. GSM paradigmits pochvel LTE paradigmi. Kartsumem vor GSM mijavairum. OTT zargatsuma an hanare. Ein pesinch pes menkeng patkiratsnum ait gortsentatsa mer patkiratsumov. Yev Operator nere, asum en menk pohenk kortsnum, jev kortsnen, anshust kortsnen, u apagajum vočinč čen stana, jete irens šarunaken, jete šarunaken pahel irens GSM cancere. It's not a problem for us. Uh, I, I, I say about absolute new platform for operators, <laughs> not UMTS, not CDMA, because in these technologies, the main service is voice. And the main revenue of operators depend from voice. The classic voice and OTT for this voice is always an enemy. In this situation, OTT like unicorn, something from magic. Uh, thank you. Maybe, maybe I mistake. I don't so, know. So, so but you're, you're, uh, yeah, uh, this but is my opinion. But but there is no answer. In order to create LTE network, you have to invest money. But we hear that there is no enough money for implementation of LTE. Uh, 4G, we have example, uh, MTC and the uh, UCOM now, had, they have installed 4G networks. Uh, as I remember, Armand uh, Bilain as well, but it's 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 a small islands in 3G uh, uh, world which we have. <coughs> you ask me, uh, you ask me that I uh, don't say um, another magic world, Inam. Okay, <laughs> don't speak about Inam. <laughs> 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 
Frederic, could you please tell, tell yeah, us yeah, yeah. something? Look, uh, I'm really interesting. To, I found it fascinating to hear the conversation, especially when it was about the Armenian market. I'm not an expert here, but trust me, this conversation happens everywhere in the world. What is important, I believe, is that solutions are not the same depending on where you talk. Uh, you ha have made a very interesting uh, comment, and that is that sometimes maybe the law might be a little bit revamped to take into account the Internet, which sometimes is not the case in many countries. What I believe is one, a country or a local government needs to be clear on what are the objectives for the Internet market and for the regulators. What are we trying to achieve? Competition? innovation, user protection, protecting shareholders' value of the telecom incumbent? I don't know. Depending on the objective that you may have, solution might differ. So uh, this tension exists and always will uh, until indeed there might be a moment where there will be a balance. What we need to keep in mind is how we need to continue to protect the open internet in such an environment. I'd like to add something for our operator's friends. Uh, yes, there is a real challenge to the voice market from OTT. Um, is it good or is it bad? I believe that any challenge on the retail price of an operator is good. It forces operators to be innovative. Uh, between you and I, operators use IP for a while when they're saying that uh, they're not competing on the same platform. Everybody use IP, even telecoms operators. And operators might have a competitive advantage, and this is the proximity. They have boutiques or shops in cities. Mobile operators have this. They might know the behavior of consumers. They might use this more efficiently. But I'm not here to give any advice. What I mean is, um, yes, there are clear objectives, and solution will depend upon the objective that a government or a regulator has in mind. And there's also something we have not addressed here, which might be important, and those are public interest. So you remember uh, uh, the, the say that on the internet, a call is not a call. If you don't terminate on the numbering space, this is not a call. No, of course, WhatsApp or Skype can terminate on this new public open space, meaning what's happening in terms of public safety privacy, emergency calls. So maybe there is also space for, uh, for regulators to take this into account. Thank you. Thank you. Call is, has definition and uh, also it will be very interesting to ask Thomas. Uh, uh, there is a Skype out, Viber out. Uh, what is your opinion? Uh, uh, Skype out, uh, Viber out. Uh, providing these services in Armenia. That is to say that is there an agreement with Skype that through Skype you get in touch with Vivacell and Vivacell from its numbers calls out. Is there anybody uh, provides Vib that is providing Viber out service? Uh, wouldn't say so. No, we do not have any direct agreement with with them. This traffic comes from some intermediate careers through some intermediate operators. Who are these others? Could you please tell us who are these others? Yeah, we also use these others, but I can't tell you more about them. Baram, who are these others? Well, there are several categories. There are uh, exchanges, minute exchanges. Uh, you can buy them from different countries. I, I don't want to speak about you. Uh, through internet, it reached Yerevan. From Yerevan number, a call went to Yerevan number. It is legal. Same Vivacel, Armentel. It is the same story of the 18 cents, meaning it's... So 18 cents is lost this way or that way. No, no, it, it's not lost. <coughs> meaning the call, as Fred said, has its definition. It must go reach, say, Ye164 numbering domain, which is called call, phone call. If the call comes from one computer to another computer, which 
is not yes one six four number series that's not a call the call starts when from yerevan number that computer as a armenian number they call to armenian other number who is providing this the skype out most probably there is kind of a computer or server which is situated in armenia and it has its owner the skype reaches there through internet and then this server passes the calls from Armenia to Armenia. There are two different things. Different things. When they call from outside to Armenia, mainly Skyper and Viber, we are using legal 